Greetings and welcome to Woody's Wisdom. I'm your host and your buddy, friend, and pal, Woody, that amazingly handsome English golden retriever at Project Harmony. No need to applaud because truth be told, I'm also pretty shy. So I kind of get embarrassed about all the attention, but even I have to admit, I'm just about the friendliest dog on the planet. Oh, anybody happen to have treats with them today? Anybody? No treats, huh? That's too bad. Oh, well, next time. But you probably also know that I love spending time with neighbors and kids who want to share their experiences and challenges. Today, I'm here with my friend Amara, and I think she has some things on her mind. The world can be a pretty tricky place, and we're here to help you and her feel more comfortable about asking questions and talking about challenges. I'm hoping we learn something valuable together. Hi, Amara. How are you today? Oh, Woody. I'm so sorry about the other day. I need to apologize to you. Gosh, Amara, I don't understand. What do you need to apologize for? Well, remember when I had that Hershey bar and I broke off a piece to share with you? My parents always say, if you have a treat, you should share it with your friends. I thought it was nice of you to share it with me. Oh, not if it's chocolate and not if you're sharing with a friend who also happens to be a dog. Why is that? It's pretty technical. My parents explained it. I just didn't catch all the facts, but they got really worried when I told them about it. Chocolate is really bad for man's best friend. Well, Lamar, we canines don't always know what's good or bad for us. If you have treats, we'll only have eyes for the treat. And we don't have any idea if we should or shouldn't eat it. Luckily, I'm okay and didn't suffer because of it. <sighs> Thank goodness. I didn't give you much because there wasn't much left when I finally saw you, but it could have been really bad for you, and I'm glad I know about it now. I'll check with one of the adults before I offer you anything else to eat. And I know I should always get permission from owners or handlers before I pet any animal. It's never good to just think it's okay. You know what, Amara? This is such a good plan you can apply it to people, too. I can? Sure. Please always ask permission before you touch people's hair or any part of their body. Just like with a pet. It's always the first thing and the right thing to do. And be prepared for them to say no. Even though you may mean it as a compliment, they have a right to refuse your request. This reminds me of a word that we should probably check out. Consent. It means to agree or give permission for something to happen. Neither one of us knew that chocolate was unhealthy for dogs, so I gave you my consent, my permission for you to feed it to me. There are all kinds of things in life that require us to give permission first, like for someone to give us a hug, for instance. On the other hand, there are things we need to say no to, things that make us uncomfortable or that we know are wrong. Sometimes saying yes is easier than saying no, but sometimes it's the opposite. Before things get confusing, we should consult my friend Atelorix. She'll help us. Atelorix? I don't know her. Does she work at Project Harmony too? Atelorix Alba Ventress. She is the smartest African pygmy hedgehog in the Southern Hemisphere, probably in the Northern one too. She can convert corn into ethanol, is a whiz at Uno, can recite the epic poem Beowulf in Old English, was asked to join the hedgehog cast of Cirque du Soleil, and she can make a four minute egg in three minutes. At least that's what I've heard. Wow, she sounds incredible. Do you think she knows about consent? Well, I do know she can make things understandable. It's her job, but I'm the only one who can contact her. I do it through a series of high pitched whale sounds Morse code, dashes and dots, and semaphore flags. Woody, is that you? Hello, it's been a while, my friend. Too long, Addie. You know, I'd make contact every day if I could, but I realize you're busy. As usual, today we need some help with an important word. Oh, excuse me, Atelorix. This is my friend Amara. I'm pleased to meet you, Miss Atelorix. And I'm pleased to meet you, Amara. I was just about to whip up a batch of dream bars, but that can wait. Dream bars? Wow, they sound delicious. Yes, but not for you, Woody. One of the ingredients is chocolate. Chocolate contains theobrimine and caffeine, stimulants that can lead to rapid breathing and feelings of restlessness in dogs. And large amounts can cause seizures and even death. But you'd have to eat a lot of chocolate for that to happen. See what I mean, Amara? Atelorix knows a lot about, a lot. No more chocolate for me in any amount. Thanks. So Atelorix, 
The real reason I got in touch is because we'd like to talk to you about the idea of consent. Well, you probably already know that consent means to agree to an action, to say yes. Maybe you have two pencils and a schoolmate wants to borrow one. Since the pencils belong to you, you need to give your consent to lend one to the person asking, if the answer is yes. Consenting to something means that you agree to it. If the answer is no, then there can be a nice way to say no as well. I would always try to share if I have an extra anything. Or if I didn't, I would ask my friends if they could help. But what if someone was trying to get me to give my consent to something I don't agree with or something that sounds unsafe? Those are incredibly important questions, Amara. It's a good idea to think about how to go about responding. Glad you asked. So can you give me some examples of those kinds of situations? Okay. For one thing, lots of my friends post things online constantly, sometimes more than once a day, and they get a ton of people following them. They are really popular, and they want me to post stuff too. They're always bugging me about it. Hmm. How do you feel about that? I know posting is a way to make new friends, and get known by a lot of different people, but sometimes it backfires and people think the opposite of what you want them to think, like that you're conceited and egotistical and that you talk about yourself too much. Is that what you think? Well, yeah, kinda. I know my friends aren't really like that, but when they post too much and it's always about them, it's what people seem to think. Do you worry about what people think? Um, Woody, I'm in middle school. And in middle school, everybody worries about what other people think. Good point. Do you ever post anything online? Sure. Stuff like, congratulations to the seventh grade girls basketball team, or our homeroom won the Halloween door decorating contest. Way to go, room 312. Miss Atelerix, what do you think? Should I do more posting like my friends do? Only if you want to. Amara, it seems like they are pressuring you to validate or approve their actions. They want to be able to say that you agree with what they're doing because you do it too. Have you ever posted anything you didn't feel okay about? Yes. Some of the comments my friends post are pretty mean, and they want me to agree with them online. Then lots of people see these comments. They become public. I know. Sometimes, just because my friends wanted me to, I've posted some mean memes, even about people I don't even know. How did you feel about that? I think I really hurt them. When I would see them in the hall at school, they would look pretty sad. But my friend would always say, if you don't post what I want you to, it means you and I can't be friends anymore. Ow, that's a lot of pressure, huh? Yeah, it is. Amara, no one should ever try to force their friends to do anything. They don't sound very understanding. There is no right amount of posting, just the amount and type of posts that you feel comfortable with. The kind that allow you to maintain a healthy relationship with your devices, the internet, your friends, and even people you don't know that well. What would you like to say to your friends? Now? Well, I'd like to say, hey, I understand that you feel badly about something that happened between the two of you, or you would never write anything so hurtful. I hope that you can work out your differences face to face before you post anything bad. But I'm uncomfortable with making an enemy of somebody by saying mean things about them online. They can just as easily turn around and write something terrible about me, or worse, make up something untruthful. It's how rumors get started and nothing ever gets settled. Amara, I think your idea of the best way to handle situations where your friends expect you to post mean things on their behalf sounds pretty good to me. Number one, suggest that the two who are involved in whatever the argument is try to work it out before the situation gets out of hand. Number two, let your friend know that you understand how they're feeling. Number three, always tell the truth about how you feel. What do you think, Addie? It's always best to tell your friends the truth, and it's good to validate their feelings the way you did, Amara. You said you understood that something had happened that involved the two of them, something that had obviously made your friend feel misunderstood, angry, or sad, but that it was between the two of them, and working out a solution face-to-face -face would help them keep the situation from getting worse. Nobody likes to hear the word no, but sometimes it can be the most important two-letter word in the English language, and sometimes the hardest to say. Just realize that you might have to say it more than once to finally get the point across. What do you mean exactly? I have an example. Do you mind, Addie? Of course not, Woody. Let's hear it. Well, we dogs can't say no, but we can react in a negative way. When people just march up to my face and then pat me on the head, I don't like it. So I shy away from them. I know they're trying to be friendly, but it doesn't work. Allowing me to come to them and to get to know them first is best. Then affectionately scratching me under my chin is the way to go. 
You mentioned that earlier, didn't you, Woody, before I got on the call? Yes, Addy. Your hearing is remarkable. Oof. True, Woody, but your advice is sound. Dogs and kids, well, everybody really, needs a chance to get comfortable with people before they enter someone else's space or their sphere. Amara, any thoughts on the subject? Yeah. I have a relative, my Uncle Jay. He's kind of a big guy, very cheerful and funny. My brother's cousins and I all love him. But he has this habit of hugging too hard, punching us on the arm or slapping us on the back when he first sees us or when he makes a corny joke. The problem is he thinks they're love pats. That's what he calls them anyway, but they can really hurt. What's a good way to handle this situation? Well, we don't want to hurt his feelings because we love him. We know he's crazy about us, that he would always protect us from harm. He just doesn't realize that one of the things we need protection from is him. I do have some ideas, though. What are they? Well, we could do this thing they do on TV, where all the relatives get together for a family meeting. One by one, they read letters to the person about how they feel his or her actions have affected them. That's one way. But we worry that he might think we're ganging up on him. He might think that. What other ideas do you have? We could ask our parents to meet with him. That could work. Or maybe the older cousins could meet with him and explain how we younger ones feel. Sounds like a plan. As long as you all look him in the eye, use pleasant voices, tell him how much you love him, how you each feel, and give your reasons. Then you all need to listen to what he has to say. Any other ideas? I've had so many imaginary conversations with him. I pretty much know exactly what I'd like to say, even if I was by myself. Woody, would you and Amara like to do a little role play? If you two are agreeable, Woody, you could be Uncle Jay. Oof. And Amara, you could play yourself and say to Woody what you'd like to say to your uncle. Okay, got it. I'll give you the signal to begin. One, two, three, go. Hi, Uncle Jay. Well, hi there, Pumpkin. Come on over and give us a big bear hug. I'd love to, but first, can we talk? <laughs> what? I can't have a hug first. Well, that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. What's to talk about? It's just a hug. Except my hugs are extra special, right? For sure. You put a lot of effort into them. Sometimes too much? <laughs> hey, what are you saying? That my hugs hurt? <laughs> yes, Uncle Jay. Because you squeeze too hard. And sometimes you punch too hard, and sometimes your slaps on the back make it hard to breathe or knock us over. My love pets? Am I hearing this right? Yes. We know you love us, and we sure love you too. And the fact that you're tall and strong makes us feel more safe and secure when you're around. But we just need you to take a second to stop and think before you deliver one of your love pats. I had no idea. Why didn't you ever mention this before now? I tried. But I didn't do a very good job. None of us want to hurt your feelings. You support and encourage us, and we didn't want that to go away. We just want it to not hurt to be around you. Hmm. You know, I would never want to hurt any of you. All of us know that, Uncle Jay. I'll do my best from now on. Thanks for letting me know. Wow, that was hard for both of us. Hard for you to deliver the bad news and hard for me to hear it. But I needed to know about it. And you were brave and honest. I'm proud of you, Amara. Thanks, Uncle Jay. Amara, great job. Would you feel more comfortable now talking to your uncle? Yes, I would. That was amazing. Thanks, Woody. You really sounded like my Uncle Jay. Well, thanks, Amara. Glad you were able to put your thoughts in order. Like you said earlier, if you really listen to the other person, it helps a lot. Then you know what to say next. Amara, you did all the things we talked about. You looked him in the eye, you used a pleasant voice, you didn't get emotional or loud, you told him how you feel, and you gave him your reasons, and you listened to what he had to say in return. You know, there are times when you need to act quickly and decisively, maybe even loudly and physically. Times when logic and being polite won't work. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think you mean in dangerous situations, when somebody tries to get you to consent to things you don't want to do, like maybe get into a stranger's car. You're right. We're talking about personal safety now. If you're threatened physically, you need to say no in as many ways as you can think of. And that might include kicking, biting, screaming, yelling for help, whatever you can think of to protect yourself. 
Saying no is not the same as rejection. When you learn to say no and mean it, you can hopefully avoid a situation that could have a very negative outcome. But you also can begin to develop confidence, independence, and self-worth. And those are all valuable qualities. Agreed. Woody, can you recap what we all learned today? Oh, there's a lot. Hope I can remember it all. You know we'll help, won't we, Amara? Of course we will, Woody. Okay, I'll give it the old college try. Woody, did you go to college? Not exactly. But I did achieve an advanced degree in obedience school. The old college try is just an expression that means I'll try my best. Here goes. Well, the first thing we discussed was the meaning of consent. Saying yes to something we are okay with or we agree to go along with. If we do not give our consent, it means we can't go along with what others expect. Okay, next. Just because others expect us to give our consent to something doesn't mean we shouldn't listen to our own inner voice or our instincts. If we don't want to put a lot of personal things online or we don't want to go along with the crowd and post mean comments, we can say no without ever raising our voices or being angry in return. We just have to mean no when we say no even if we just have to say it more than once. That's such good advice, Woody. Is there more? Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just look them in the eye and stand your ground. What's that called again, Woody? Nonverbal communication. Oh yeah, nonverbal communication. One more thing. Be open to people expressing their opinions. We don't have to agree with them, but if we give them positive feedback for being honest, it will help us all share our thoughts with confidence and respect. Miss Atellerix, do I have your consent to ask you some questions? Of course. What would you like to know? How do you turn corn into ethanol? Isn't that the stuff that's in gas station fuel? Well, it's complicated, but here goes. First, there are two blending methods, ratio blending and sequential blending. We have design and engineering teams in our plant to help provide expertise with ethanol, unloading skids, tank pumping, piping, meters, control valves, and automate valves. Did you get that? Not really. I don't get it exactly either, but there are lots of people who work here who do know how it's done. Are you really in the hedgehog cast of Cirque du Soleil? Indubitably. We are an immensely talented troupe. Rudis, George. Um, can we play Uno sometime? As long as we invite Woody. Oh. What about the three minute egg? I perfected my cooking technique so much, people actually prefer my three minute eggs to the traditional four minute recipe. Will you recite that poem, what's it called, Beo something? Beowulf? Are you sure you want me to? It has over 3,000 lines. That's okay. I'll take your word for it. Oops, look at the time. Gotta go now. It's been fun exploring the idea of consent with you two. Stay safe. And remember, Woody, no chocolate. No chocolate. I'll remember, too. Thanks for introducing me to Addie, Woody. And I appreciate all your help. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. Bye for now, friends. Remember, all the folks at Project Harmony have your back when you have the need. We look forward to the next time we can be together. Oh! Thanks for listening to Woody's Wisdom. Our show is produced by Project Harmony and Respect. Cool. Okay. All right, next thing is um, on page 11. Saying no is not the same thing as rejection. So this is an Atellerix line. When you learn to say no and mean it, you can hopefully avoid a situation that could have a very negative outcome. It's only like half a page below the Uncle Jay scene. Oh, what you are. Is this stuff that I already repeated? I don't remember. That you already repeated? Mm-hmm. Um, Uncle Jay, Uncle Jay. It's really a segment where it's Woody and, and Amara and a Telrix. I have the line about getting to a stranger's car. Oh, I see it. And there's a Woody line and then there's You're right. So We're talking start about with the rejection now. line. Say, oh, sorry, say it again. So start with the rejection line. Yeah.